BT here and these are the top five gaming mice fall edition because there will be one more video towards the end of the year for the end of the year final list before we go into 2020. So the way I treat my top five gaming mice is kind of like a power ranking. So throughout the year, you know, you might have your favorite football team. They might be undefeated, but maybe they played all the easy teams and they're ranked lower on a power ranking. So I kind of treat mine the same way. So if something happens throughout the year where like there's build quality issues or things go wrong, I will then drop it in my power ranking. So don't be surprised if your favorite mouse is not as high as it was before. And by doing this, I feel like it keeps the companies accountable for what they're doing and what they're putting out. And again, this is not gonna be a full review of every single mouse, but it's just gonna be a little bit of what I like best about each mouse and why I think it deserves to be on the list. So without any further ado, let's start off with the number five mouse on the list. Coming in at number five, we have the Extra Fi M4. Now it's got that 3389 sensor it's got some great clicks as well as that rgb that's controlled by that top button it's coming in at 60 to 70 dollars depending on what colorway you get i love that retro one and that one's about 70 dollars i think it's well worth it it's a medium sized mouse it's honeycomb and it weighs in at 69 grams one thing that i love about this mouse is that it's very well balanced and it's ergo so for you palm grip users out there this is one of the best mice to come out this year so it is medium size so for you large handers out there make sure you're using the claw grip this can work for fingertip grip as well i actually used it as a fingertip grip mouse when i got it and it performed perfectly the curve isn't so much that it will get in the way. I love how low the front end is. It gives you a lot of control and the back end really supports your palm really well. So for you palm grip, claw grip users out there, this one is a godsend. Now the cord is a little bit on the stiffer side, so that's why it's not as high on the list. I would mod this with like a paracord or something like that. So overall, this mouse really surprised me this year and I definitely think that it deserves to be on a lot of people's list, especially you palm and claw grip users out there. Coming in at number four, we have the Model O and Model O Minus. Now this one is the former number one and I thought I was gonna keep it there, but then the cables happened, the faulty cables, the wobbly buttons, and it wasn't, you know, normally I'd be like, okay, this is just a normal part of the process, but it was more with the packaging. It would come already packaged, messed up. Now, I didn't experience this firsthand, but I know a lot of you guys out there would come to me, I would see on forums, people would tweet at me, and it was just too much to ignore. So I couldn't put it as high and recommend it as high as I did. And trust me guys, it really hurts my heart to say that, and hopefully Glorious can correct all of this and get it going in 2020 with an updated version. The updated packaging is already coming through so i think that once they do that i think it'll rise back up to its uh greatness but let's talk about the model o and the o minus right now now the original ascended cord was too loose of a weave and that caused the wire to bend now they've come back with the ascended cord and this one it has a little bit tighter of a weave and that's going to keep it from kinking and being destroyed over time that cord feels amazing once you do put it on, but it does cost $20 to do. So that's another added cost. Now the mouse is coming in at $50 for the matte and 60 for the glossy. They've got some of my favorite mouse feet of any mouse on the list. And the shapes are amazing. They're based off the FK1 and the FK2. I love the Model O minus personally. And once I put that new ascended cord on there, it became God tier. 
So the weights of the Model O is 67 or 68 gram when you do the matte or the glossy. And then it's 58 for the matte on the Model O minus and 59 for the glossy. Now this is an ambidextrous shape and it feels great in the hand. The Model O is gonna be really good for like palm, claw, and fingertip. And the Model O minus is a godsend for fingertip grip users out there. It's got grooves in all the right places. The clicks are really good if you do get a good copy. And I think the side buttons are great. They're placed in a really good spot where you can reach them. Definitely the best new fingertip grip mouse out this year was the Model O minus. Coming in at number three, we have the G Wolves Hottie. Now this company really surprised me this year with the quality that they were able to put out. Starting with the skull, which is my main for a long time. And pretty much the only reason why I moved off the skull, because I know people are going to ask, is because I moved over to like a fingertip or a claw grip. And other ambidextrous mice were just way better for that. It's coming in at a whopping 60 grams. Amazing weight. And the weight distribution of this mouse is one of my favorites. They also have some of my favorite clicks on the market. And they give you a lot of extras in the box. They give you like the switches. They give you an extra cord. There's a lot of value with this mouse. And it's aimed at enthusiasts, which I really, really love. You can either choose a 3360 sensor or pay a little bit extra for the 3389. I personally go with the 3360. They also come in a bunch of different colors. So this one came out with the first, the white and the black and the fade. And then now they're moving over to like the reds, the teals. And now I got that rubberized version one, which feels extra matte and it's super sick. I love that mouse. So if you're somebody that has sweaty hands, the rubberized hottie is gonna be for you for sure. The mouse feet could be better though. They have those Teflon feet and they're a little bit on the thin side. So you just replace those with some hyperglides and this mouse will fly. Now it's got an ambidextrous shape and I always describe this mouse as like a medium final mouse. It's a medium final mouse and it feels like it in the hand. When it first came out, people thought it was gonna be a G Pro wireless copycat, but this thing feels like a medium ultralight. And that's pretty much what we needed. We needed something in the middle and I think this mouse will work for a lot of people out there. It's an amazing fingertip grip mouse. It's an amazing claw grip mouse and you can palm it if you choose. Hopefully there's some Black Friday deals on this mouse. All right, guys, so here we are. We're at the last two mice. I think you guys know what they are, but not the order. So this one kind of hurt my heart as well because I love both of these mice. It's like telling a parent to choose between their two kids. It's impossible. That's how I feel right now. But coming in at number two, we have the Logitech G Pro Wireless. Now you can find this mouse for about $130 to $150. It's 80 grams. It has that nice hero sensor in it. It has an amazing shape with that ambi shape. It's not an aggressive shape by any means, which means it should work for a lot of people out there. It's a medium to maybe small mouse for some people, depending if you have big hands. It's a very slender mouse as well compared to the other mouse that we're gonna talk about in just a second. So a lot of people would get hand cramps with this one and it wouldn't work. And what I say to people when it comes to the G Pro Wireless is give it some time. You're not gonna love it at first. I didn't love it at first, but after a while, once you really kind of realize how great this mouse is, how simple it is, and it just works, you're gonna love this mouse. So give it some time, guys, if you do pick one up, Please, I, I beg of you, give it like a month. Don't just use it for a week and be like, oh, this is this is terrible. It's nothing like my other mouse. It's so simple. It's dumb. Just well, let's let's all take a breather, you know, chill, and try the mouse out. Now the mouse feet aren't the best. You know, I wish they would have put some PTFE feet on, but this was kind of before the whole hyperglide movement came in and changed the game. So now I feel like in the next one, maybe a G Pro Wireless X. Maybe they'll put those PTF feet on there. The other thing I love about this mouse is the clicks. They're very simple and kind of hard to get used to. They're not the crispiest. I love how the side buttons are placed. They're easy to press with your thumb. You don't have to go and reach towards the front of the mouse. Very nicely placed. It has 40 hours of battery life, 50 with the RGB off. And this thing is a solid performer. No matter how you look at it, it's one of the most used mice in gaming currently today over Overwatch, Apex. If you guys look at the amount of people, I think even Simple, the CSGO god, the best player in the world, is actually using the G Pro Wireless right now. And I think this really changed the game in terms of what a wireless mouse could be. So it's always gonna be in the talks for being the number one mouse. All right guys, so we have come to the final mouse on the list no pun intended, 
well, there is no pun here, but I think you guys can figure out what mouse this is. It is the Razer Viper Wireless. Now this mouse really changed the game this year. It really is baffling me that we're saying that Razer has the number one mouse right now after the past history that they've had, but they've come back and they've really listened, they work with the pros, and they've given us a product that is quality. On paper, they've given us everything that we've wanted. It's got a similar shape to one of the most popular shapes ever made, the FK1 from Zowie. It's got 70 hours of battery life, 30 more than the G Pro Wireless. They've also got this amazing dock to put your mouse on as well. They've got that Focus Plus sensor in there that allows you to adjust the landing and lift off distance. And they also have it where it can tune to your surface, no matter what surface that you have. Also, they put those new Razer optical mechanical switches in there that get rid of debouncing. So no more double clicks like we've been seeing in other mice. Now, people say that those new Razer clicks are a little bit mushy. I get it. They're not as clicky as some of the other ones on the list or, you know, like an ultralight or anything like that. But you kind of give up the, that clickiness for performance. It's got those nice side grips on there as well. My only complaint about this mouse is that it's not smaller. But for now, this mouse does work wonders for a lot of people out there. It can work with palm, it can work with claw, and it can definitely work with fingertip grip. So I would love to see them make a smaller, like, 65 gram viper minus oh my you can't tell me that's not getting close to end game all right guys that is going to do it for this video of the top five mice now i do have one more coming out at the end of the year we're going to do an end of the year blowout because we still have like the model d coming out we who knows what razor is going to do towards the end of the year or if logitech's going to drop so i don't want to make this the end of the year one i have faith that somebody's going to drop before the christmas season is done all right guys it has been your boy bt don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next video peace